uh, we're finishing up our series this week. It's been five weeks we've been talking about the Olympics, and today we're talking about finishing well. And if there's anything that I think all of us want to do, it's finish well, right? I mean, nobody just wants to kind of finish. It's just like you want to finish well. And so I want to hopefully give us some thoughts and some encouragement that will hopefully inspire you and help you to finish well. And uh, to start off, we're going to look at our word, torchbearer, one more time and kind of get this burned in our memory of what God wants us to be. He wants us to be someone that's going to inspire others working toward a valued goal, a purpose. You see, we all have a purpose. God has created us with intentionality. You are not here just taking up space. You are here for a reason. God has something he wants you to accomplish, something that he wants you to do, and he wants you to do that very well. But it's not just for you. It's one of the things that we learned this weekend looking at Luke 18. The rich young ruler had all of this stuff. I mean, he was very, very wealthy. And then he comes to Jesus and he says, well, What can I do to get eternal life? Because he knew he couldn't buy it. So it's like, well, well, I'm missing this one thing. How can I have eternal life? And Jesus said, well, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. You see, what Jesus was essentially saying to him was this, is that everything that you've been giving all of your wealth, it's not just for you. So go and distribute it to the poor. You see, we tend to think that everything that we have, it's for me. But as a torchbearer, you don't look at life that way. You look at life as this way. How can I share what I have and give it to the next generation? How can I pass it on to the next generation that's coming up? And folks, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The students, the people that I know, the kids that we know who are involved with our church, especially because I know them best, okay, they want, they want to do what God wants them to do. But, you know, here's here's where the problem is, is they don't know how to do it. And they're not going to know how to do it unless somebody like you helps them, unless you invest, unless you get involved. And I'm going to tell you this. I know it may be scary. You may be thinking, I don't know the first thing about technology. That's okay. You don't have to know anything because they can teach you, (laughs) right? You see, the thing is this. It's called reverse. It's, It's like reverse mentoring, Right? You're going in, you're going to help them learn something, and they're going to help you learn something. It's not about just what you've got to give. It's about what you can get from the relationship that we also heard this morning, Kirsten was saying. Right? We can learn from one another. And so I want to encourage you as a torchbearer, as someone who's, who God has given you certain things. You're older. You have more opportunities, perhaps, than they do. But with what you can teach them, with what you can give them, you can propel them into the future that God is creating for them. But you've got to get involved. So let's look at this passage one more time. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings to us so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We're going to talk about four characteristics today on how to finish well. Four characteristics. They're going to be very simple, very easy for you to remember. And so the first one is this. Let us look around. Let us look around. In that passage we just looked at, he said... Look at this great cloud of witnesses. Look at all these people that have gone on before you. He says, take a moment and just look at your heritage. Take a moment and look at all of these people and the things that they accomplished. You should be inspired by that. Man, when I tell you, when I look at Usain Bolt, run, I'm inspired. I'm like, dude, I want to run like that. Right? I'm just like, give me some, give me, give me that, you know, outfit, dude. Right? Put me in that Jamaican outfit and I can run just like Usain Bolt. It's not going to happen. But I'm inspired. I mean, I'm just like, dude, I want to do that. Because you look at the other people who've done it before you and you think, man, can I be like that? Can I be like that? You see, Hebrews 11 is all about that. 
You look at all these people who live before you. And he says, let us look at that. Look around you and look at all these saints who live before you and be inspired. Because they, they did it, you can do it. That's what's amazing. That's what's amazing. I can't run like Usain Bolt. That's never going to happen. But you know what? All those people that lived in Hebrews 11, I can live like that. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Every time you look at one of those stories in Hebrews 11, you see those two words. By faith. By faith. By faith. This happened. And by faith, you can finish well. So take a look around. Look at the people who are accomplishing these things. And, then, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm not super spiritual. I am not, you know, some well-educated, highfalutin, you know, guy who knows all this stuff. I'm, I'm really a nobody. Some of you. Yeah, some of you, somebody's like, that's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. You know me well, right? That's the truth. But listen, you may be feeling that way. But I'm telling you this. You look at all the people in the Scripture. Many of them didn't have any kind of education, didn't have any kind of special degrees, but they had what they needed by faith. So take a look around. If you don't feel like you can do it, you're in good company. You're in good company. You can finish well. Just take a look around. And then also, make sure you're looking at Jesus. You see, it's one thing to look at all these other people and look at what they did. But if you really need some inspiration, look at Jesus. Look at what he accomplished. Look at what he did. It's amazing for me to think about all that Jesus endured on the cross. And yet he's the one that is my example. When I, when I start feeling like things are, are tough and hard, look to Jesus who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising its shame. You see, when times get tough, we need to look to our supreme example, Jesus Christ. He is the one that we look to. No matter how alone you may feel, there are others who are cheering you on. And I want to say this. It's important for you to let your cheer be known. (laughs) Wouldn't it be horrible I mean, and, and I told you uh, an example of me running a race in, in high school when I was doing hurdles. And there was hardly nobody in the stands. Nobody was watching me. I mean, people were just kind of late. They saw me running like, oh, who's that guy? And they're just walking out, you know. They just, who cares? I'm not watching that. How discouraging, right? And you know, we should be cheering one another on. We should be in the stands for one another saying, yeah, keep going, keep going. Don't stop. And so, I know that some of you may be praying for each other. That's great. But sometimes you need to verbally, physically encourage one another. Because I'm telling you, there are so many voices out there that are saying, you can't do it, you might as well stop. And if your voice is over here, just don't keep going. I'm cheering for you. Yeah, keep going. You need to be like, keep going. Don't stop. Run with all you've got. You might want to turn me down a little bit. <laughs> I know that I, 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 I really don't need this, you know. We just do this for the video. So, but I, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just trying to let you know this morning that sometimes your voice is so important. So don't be like a little mouse. Just go and keep going, keep going. No, I mean, share your encouragement because people need it. People need your encouragement. And listen, I'm on Facebook quite a bit. I see some of the stuff that some of you need encouraging with, right? So let me tell you this, that if you're embarrassed to say it out loud, put it on your wall, okay? (laughs) Put it on somebody else's wall. Encourage them. Tweet it. Instagram it. I don't care how you do it. Just do it because it's so very important. Don't say that we're running. Let's Let's not say we're running together if we're not running together, okay? So if we're going to run together, let's run together. And let's encourage one another along the way. And when somebody falls down, let's stop for a second and pick them back up. We saw that in the Olympics, right? I mean, one of the most profound things that happened in the Olympics, and I don't have this clip, and I should have have put it on there, but but I didn't put it on there today, was when the two uh, women were, were trying to qualify. And they got tangled up, right? And one of them was American, the other one's from, uh, can't remember where she was from. 
uh, maybe like New Zealand or something like that. And um, so they got tangled up. And instead of keep going, the girl stopped and helped her up. Now, do you remember who won that race? No. I don't remember. But you know what? I remember that. I remember her stopping and helping. And it's one of the most talked about stories of the whole entire Olympics. About how that was so crucial to the Olympic spirit. That it wasn't about winning. It wasn't about even just finishing. It was about let me stop and help and let's finish together. When we finish together, we finish well. Right? So, look around. Let us look out. You got to look out. Because I'm telling you, there is competition. There is someone, as I've already mentioned this morning, seeking to prevent you from finishing the race. Could be something. Could be bad relationships. Could be struggles, addictions. Could be any number of things that could be preventing you. And you've got to look out for this stuff. Because I'm telling you, it will destroy you. It will destroy you. Paul said this in 2 Timothy 4, 7. He's talking to his young protege. And he says, Timothy. He's coming to the end of his life. He says, Timothy, I can say this. I have fought the good fight. He didn't say I fought the easy fight. He said I fought the good fight. I don't know of any fight. I don't know of any fight. I mean, if, if you're talking about a fight, a fight. I mean, and I'm telling you this. Guy fights are bad. But women fights are worse. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I, was, I made a mistake in high school. I will never make this mistake again. They, we, had, we had two gangs in our school. We had the surfers, and then we had the black jackets. And the black jackets were, a pla- for, were from a place called Mill Creek. And these, these gang members, whatever you want to call them, I mean, they were rough and tumble. And these two girls, after school one day, decided they were going to have a fight. And so, I mean, the bell rings. We're all walking to go outside the, um, to, the, to the bus stop and, and get on the buses and everything. And they just break out in a fight right there at the entrance of the, door, of the school. I mean, just start going at it. And so, as you know, everybody kind of crowds around. And they're all watching. So I'm stuck there kind of in this crowd. And everybody's like, rip her head off. Come on, let's see some blood. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking, somebody's got to do something. Somebody should stop this. I figured, well, I guess I'm that somebody. So I chose to go into the ring. So I walked in there. And I mean, these girls were just going at it. And I was just like, get out of And I pried them apart. And my arms held for like five seconds. And then I collapsed in between them. I was like, oh. And they were like, ha, 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 ha. This one girl took the other girl's hair and ripped it out by the roots. I mean, a whole handful of hair is laying on the ground. It's like she just cleaned out her hairbrush. I was like, ha, ha, ha. That is not what happened to me, okay? All right. All right. And I mean, I'm just thinking these people are going at it. It was like, I want to hurt you, right? That's what a fight is about. And somebody is trying to hurt you, prevent you from getting what God wants for you. Paul says, I fought the good fight. I stayed in it to the end. I didn't quit. He says, I finished the race, and I have kept the faith. You see, if you're going to finish well, you've got to keep the faith. How do you keep the faith? It's not something that we just hold to ourselves. In fact, the way you keep the faith is you give it away. You give it away. That's what a torch bearer does, is they pass the faith on to the next generation. They give it to those around them. They share the good news. They share their stories. They share their inspiration with one another. Whether you know it or not, there are people watching you. There are people watching you. And you may not be aware of it. And there are little eyes watching you. And you're passing on things that you may not even know you're passing on. Are you passing on by faith? By faith? Do they see elements of faith in your life? Do they see elements of hope in your life? Do they see elements of you fighting the good fight? Do they see that? You see, that's what it's about. So again, 
Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings to us so closely. We talked about this. Those things that are like static electricity. It just clings to you. You got you to shake it off. You got to let it go. Sometimes we're going to have to physically remove it from our lives. You're going to have to do that. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. He says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. You might want to circle that. Self-control in all things. Not just spiritual things. You see, it's, whether you know it or not, all of life is spiritual. Everything that you do affects your spiritual life. And your spiritual life affects everything else you do. In a couple of weeks, we're going to start a series that's going to call, be called Roots. Here's, here's the thing that I want you to understand about roots. Your roots affect your fruits. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Okay? If you want more fruit, better fruit, check your roots. And if you're shallow in your spiritual life, you're not going to have abundant fruit in your life. So many people look and they think, oh man, I want, I want what you got. Well, you want to pay the price? You really want it? You see, he says this, exercise discipline in all things. All things. You exercise and discipline in all things. Not just the spiritual stuff, but in every area of your life are you exercising discipline. He says, they do it to receive a prize or a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. There is a goal, a purpose, a reason to doing what we do. I do not box as beating the air. Every time I read that part, I think about Rocky, right? Rocky Balboa, you know, in the ring with Apollo Creed. It's just great, you know? And we've got to understand that we've got a purpose in life. We're not just shadow boxing. We're doing this for a reason. And so he says, so I discipline my body and I keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Paul says this, listen, look around. Look around. Be careful. Look out. Because something will trip you up if you're not careful. So let me put it in this this terminology from Rap Meister George. Pay attention, all you peeps. It's not a game. This is for keeps. Pay attention, all you peeps. (laughs) Pay attention, all right? It's a game. It's not a game. This is for keeps. All right? It's my best little poem for you, okay? If you don't know what peeps are, that's you, okay? All right? Not the little squishy marshmallow yellow thing, yeah. All right? Listen, this is for keeps. It's not a test. You don't get a second chance. Whatever you do in this life, it's all you got. So do it well. Do what you do well. All right? So what's the first thing? Let us what? Look where? Look around. Let us what? And the second one is what? Look out. Okay? Let us look out. All right? Now, to help you remember some of this this morning, all right, we're going, I've, got a, I've got a treat for you. You guys know I like to do this kind of stuff. I like to give you something or whatever to help you kind of remember these things. So uh, where are my helpers? If y'all can, uh, Trevor maybe and um, some of you guys, Caleb, you guys back over there are going to help back there. We've got something we're going to give you. Uh, because this morning all the four points are going to start out with let us. So I'm going to give you some lettuce wraps because we are wrapping up this sermon, all right? Let us wrap. So, and I just did my little wrap here. So they're going to give you a BLT lettuce wrap. You don't have to take one, but if you'd like to take one, feel free, okay? It's a BLT lettuce wrap. And the thing is this, is that every time you have lettuce in a salad, I want you to be thinking about this sermon, all right? So they're going to pass it down. You guys take one, okay? Because this is the point. All right? Paul says, let us run the race. Let us lay aside. Let us do this. Let us do that. And you need to do that. Okay? So enjoy your let us wrap as it comes your way. The third one is this. Let us look inside. Let us look inside. 
You see, it's not enough to just look around. It's not just enough to look out. We have to really look inside and say, man, what's my character like? What's my integrity like? Who am I really? Who am I really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah. We need to, yeah, sh- let's share the love. Share the love. Bacon's always good. All right? Amen. Bacon's always good. So let us look inside. You see, what are you made of? You've got to answer this question. Why am I doing this? Why am I here? Can you answer that question? Because you see, whatever the answer to that question is, that's going to be your fuel. That's going to be your motivation. That's going to be what's going to keep you going. And if you ever have a a hazy thought or feeling about that, then you're going to falter. Every runner knows this. At somewhere in the race, you're going to hit the wall, right? Now, some of us, you know, it's like, oh, wall already. I already hit the wall. Two steps. But but look, at that point when you hit the wall, you know what's going through your mind? Can I do this? Can I make it? That's what you're asking yourself. Have I got what it takes? And somewhere deep down inside, you've got to find the reservoir, the strength, the energy, the passion, whatever, to keep going. And that's the only way you're going to finish the race. Is you've got to forget about what's going on around you. You can't look at your competition. All that matters is what's going on inside of you. So this morning, what's going on inside of you? Why are you doing this? Paul endured some great hardships. Just wanted to show you this verse this morning. Look at it. It says, five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes, less one, 39. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, not like we think of being stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own people, dangers from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false witness. Do you guys get the picture? Danger. Danger. In toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and in thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and apart from other things, there is this daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Paul said, all of this stuff that I had, and then every day I'm still living with this weight, this concern for all the churches. If there's anybody who could have given up, it was Paul. I mean, think about it. I mean, just, just being beaten 39 times with a cat of nine tails, or with rods five times. I mean, just, just, just think about that, or three times. Just think about being shipwrecked. I mean, for some of us, I mean, it wouldn't take anything. We stub our toe. Oh, I'm ready to quit. Ready to quit. It's a bad day. I mean, first thing in the morning, you know, you stub your toe. You're like, oh, it's going to be a bad day, right? (laughs) Great way to start the day. Where is Jesus? Right? God's abandoned me. That's what we're thinking. It's like, come on, seriously? Seriously. And I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I'm guilty. So I just want you to understand that there are times we're going to have to look inside. We're going to say, get over it. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be hard. It's going to be risky. And it's going to take courage. Courage. It's going to take boldness. It's going to take tenacity. It's going to take steadfastness. It's going to have to, you're going to have to have the mentality that quit is not even in your mind. Because once it is, you're going to. The runners who make it to the end, quit is not an option. It's not an option. Finishing well, that's what they're focused on. Your wise will make you wise. Why am I doing this? Why am I here? Ask yourself those questions, and then when you get the answer... 
Then you'll, it'll inform everything else you're going to do in life. Why am I here? Okay, I know why I'm here. Now I know everything else I need to do to accomplish that goal. So once you can answer your whys, it'll make you much wiser with everything else you need to do in life. Can you answer your why? Paul said this, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I have kept the faith. He said, that was my why. Why? 